At first glance, this might look like a simple gadget, with few metal pieces inside a glass bulb. But don't be fooled. Even Albert Einstein tried and failed to fully explain how it works. This means there's more to it than meets the eye. The longer you observe it, the more puzzling it becomes. This device is called a radiometer. It begins to spin almost instantly when placed near a light source. That could be sunlight, a flashlight, or even the heat from a toaster. The speed of rotation increases with the intensity of radiation, making it a simple way to measure energy. But here's the twist. If you put it in a freezer or cool it rapidly, it starts spinning in the opposite direction. This tells us one thing very clearly. It's not just a quirky desk toy. There's some serious and mysterious physics at play. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the science behind the radiometer and try to uncover what really makes it move. The Crookes radiometer, also known as the light mill, was invented in 1873 by British physicist Sir William Crookes. Its inner workings have puzzled scientists for over a century, and even today its exact mechanism is still debated. In fact, Crookes himself couldn't fully explain how it worked. So what exactly is this device? At its core, the radiometer consists of just a few basic parts. First, there's the glass bulb. It resembles a light bulb, but most of the air inside has been removed, creating a low-pressure environment. Inside the bulb, you'll find four thin metal veins mounted on a spindle. Each vein is painted black on one side and polished on the other, and that's no accident. They're designed this way to respond differently to light. The black side is often coated with something like lamp black, which absorbs light extremely well. The other side, by contrast, reflects most of the light that hits it. These veins are balanced on a low-friction spindle, which rests on a tiny glass cap supported by a very sharp pin. This clever design minimizes friction, allowing the veins to spin freely and smoothly. The veins are typically arranged so that all the black sides face the same way, usually counterclockwise when viewed from above. This means when the device spins, the black sides trail behind. Typically, the pressure inside the bulb is kept around one pascal, just a tiny fraction of normal atmospheric pressure. If the pressure is too high, the air causes too much resistance and the veins won't spin. If the pressure is too low, there aren't enough gas molecules to generate motion, and again, it won't spin. One experiment found that the ideal condition is when a single gas molecule can travel about one centimeter before hitting another. This spacing allows just the right amount of interaction to transfer energy. While several theories have been proposed to explain how it works, the most compelling one I've come across is the orbital repulsion theory. This is a relatively new theory and it offers a fascinating perspective on what might be happening inside the radiometer. According to this theory, when a photon, a tiny packet of light, strikes a molecule of air inside the bulb, the molecule absorbs its energy. This added energy can cause one of the atom's electrons to move to a higher orbital, a process known as an orbital jump, quantum jump, or atomic electron transition. The transition happens extremely quickly typically in nanoseconds or less, and appears almost instantaneous. When an atom undergoes an orbital jump, two sub-processes occur simultaneously. One, the effective size of the atom increases. Two, the distance between neighboring atoms decreases. Both of these changes strengthen the repulsive interaction between atoms, a phenomenon known as orbital repulsion. This repulsion pushes atoms apart, causing them to move in opposite directions. In the case of a Crookes radiometer, this repulsive interaction can knock nearby air molecules away from the vein surface, creating momentum that causes the veins to rotate in the opposite direction. So why does the black side always trail behind? The answer lies in how much energy each side absorbs. The black side absorbs more light which means more gas molecules nearby are undergoing orbital jumps. More expansion, more repulsion, more push. This pushes the veins in a way that makes the black side trail behind. Also, 
The greater the intensity of light, the stronger the push, and the faster the veins spin. So now, after everything we've explored, can you guess why the radiometer spins in the opposite direction when placed in the freezer? Share your guesses in the comments below. In the end, the radiometer teaches us one thing. Science is never about the easy answers. It's about the endless questions that keep the wheels turning.